For me, it has been an amazing opportunity to become a, a student, you know, of, of every, in every aspect, um, to be able to connect, you know, with the community that, that um, um, I had left a long time ago, and then to learn about, about the country, learn about uh, people again, and to, and in that process, it's just been, been very healing for me. You know, that's how it's been. Oh, well, I, I grew up in that town. I grew up in Harar and um, I left uh, when I was 16. It, it always, you know, stayed in, in, in my mind, in my heart. It was just a bit traumatic, truthfully. And, you know, returning was about, at the beginning, was to, to, to really see my grandmother. I had a little camcorder. I, br- I bought a little camcorder before I even knew that I was going to make this film. To I was filming my grandmother... Um, and, and her messages to my father, who by then was living in Mexico. It was very personal, you know, from, from the beginning um, until I realized that, you know, I probably, you know, wanted to, to make a, a film. To me, it, it all feels like so cyclical in a way because, you know, that is the way I, I, I left. I had, you know, my, my parents, they had to leave, you know, because of these political uh, uh, conflicts that so, so somehow eject you from from the space, and and I kept seeing that when I went back um, with our youth, we grew up with chat around us, you know that, um, and mostly um, at the beginning you know, it was the Sufi Muslims. It's a very important um, Muslim enclave, you know, in the in the Horn of Africa, Harar, and and the Sufi Muslims, you, you know, used chat to to sort of, you know, have these ascetic meditations, you know, to, to enter a certain, you know, space so that they can transcend and, you know, connect with, with God, um, just like most medicinal plants in the world. So, but then, you know, that, uh, uh, that, you know, chat came out of that, you know, Sufi circle and became a main cash crop. So, so that was just really, um, uh, I had so many questions about that, you know, and, and you can see it in the topography of, of, of the land, because, you know, when you, every time I went, I would drive from, from, from the city all the way to Hara, it's about a 12 hour drive, and all you could see was chat, you know, all the other crops that uh, we used to have are pretty much no longer there. So even, even visually, um, it strikes you. And also another thing that really struck me viscerally was the, the, the drying of our lakes that we grew up, um, you know, going to. So this whole thematic of water and, um, and, the, and the Sufi myth of how Chad came about was very much the, so in a way, the genesis of this project, because, you know, when you're talking about water um, in relationship to Chad, for example, you know, how the, um, the Sufi moms uh, found this, this leaf uh, while in search of the water of eternal life, uh, Mol Hayat. And so, but why did they go in search of the Mol Hayat? Um, and the reason why they went and searched for that is because an imam, uh, fear entered him one day and he, he was told in a dream to, he was spoken by his God in a dream to go and find the water of Maul Hayat as a way of that was going to heal, you know, that ailment of the soul, which is the fear. And so, um, it was really, you know, fascinating for me how, you know, you enter a journey in, in search of, you know, that, that elixir in a way that is going to heal you. And when thinking of that and thinking about how the youth today, I mean, these are centuries ago, but today, what does water signify? You know, how does water enter? You know, our water um, on the land are drying. And then the youth are looking at, at um, the water in the seas to find opportunities, you know, to find um, or even to run away from from persecution, political persecution. So um, that sort of, you know, all of it spoke to me all at the same time. 
uh, many composers in this. There's Williams, William Basinski, there's Adrian Annual, uh, Keita Hossiter. But one thing that, that truly uh, spoke to me about William Basinski's film, again, to me, um, his, um, his music, uh, as well as Adrian's music, uh, it, again, I felt the modality being healing and has a certain circularity to it. And, and to me, I, I, I really thought of that in terms of also, you know, the Sufi rituals, you know, even in their movement uh, or even in the cadences of their, of their chants. I felt that, you know, the, the black and white also reflected very much or it allowed me to um, speak more about light. We, we were um, hanging out in the farms, me and, and mommy, the kid. Mohammed, we didn't we didn't have a camera. We were just like spending time, and one of the farmers he was telling us, you know, I don't think that in my lifetime I will travel anywhere because I'm a person of the land. And he was chewing, and he said, but you know, the good thing is that I'm watching my movies, I'm watching my film in my head and my mind, and also that space where I shot it is where I I grew up. You know, I grew up going into that into that cinema that today is pretty much very forgotten and dilapidated, but it's still there. This film would have not been possible without the without the communities. The stories were coming. You know, the people that I were meeting were were somehow you know the opportunities were being created. That is somehow what truly helped me and guided me in making this film.